Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to the Stata course on regression analysis and estimation methods. Today, we will continue our discussion about the difference in differences method. The difference in differences design is a powerful identification strategy for causal effects analysis. It can alleviate the omitted variable bias and help us find the causal effects of the treatment on the outcome variable. It depends on a crucial assumption, the parallel chains assumption. It states that the treatment group and the control group are similar in every aspect, except that the control group did not receive the treatment. It is equivalent to saying that the factors other than the treatment affect the two groups in the same way. In other words, the outcome variables of the treatment group and the control group have the same trend if neither of them experiences the intervention. If the parallel chance assumption is violated, we have two solutions. One is to add control variables to the model to account for the different chains between the treatment group and the control group. Another method is to do the difference in difference in differences estimation. Let me show you these two approaches using an example in Stata. We use a dataset from the textbook Introductory Echometrics, a modern approach by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. It is a study of the lens of time that an injured worker receives workers' compensation. On July 15, 1980, Kentucky raised the cap on weekly earnings that were covered by workers' compensation. An increase in the cap has no effect on the benefit for low-income workers, but it makes it less costly for the high-income workers to stay on workers' compensation. To find out whether the policy change causes people to stay out of work longer, we can use the difference in difference in differences method. We have three dummy variables in the dataset. The time indicator it equals 1 if after the change in policy. It is 0 before the treatment. The group indicator it equals 1 for high-income workers. It's 0 for low-income workers. The state indicator. It equals 1 if in Kentucky, it is 0 in Michigan, where there were no such policy change. The treatment group is the high-income workers, and the control group is the low-income workers. The graph interpretation of the difference in difference method is as follows. We observe the outcome change of the treatment group, the high-income workers, is theta. We suspect some unobserved factors other than the treatment may cause that change. So we use the change in the control group, the low-income workers, as a proxy accounting for those unobserved factors. The control group's outcome change is alpha. We need to take away alpha to find the pure effect of the treatment, beta. The crucial assumption here is that the trends for both high-income and low-income workers are the same without the treatment. If the trends are different, we can consider the difference in difference in differences method. 
the triple difference method is to find an additional control group. In our example, both the high-income and low-income workers are from the state of Kentucky. An additional control group comes from workers in another state, Michigan. We can call Kentucky the treatment state and Michigan the control state. None of the high-income and low-income workers in the control state were exposed to the treatment. Suppose the outcome change is gamma for group 1, the high-income workers, and the change is pi for group 2, the low-income workers in Michigan. We find the difference between the high-income and low-income workers, which is omega. We use omega to represent the difference in the trends for Kentucky's high-income and low-income workers. Therefore, after taking away omega from the total effect, we find the pure average treatment effect beta. We remove alpha and omega from the total effect theta. Alpha accounts for the unobserved factors that affect the outcome while omega represents the different trends between the treatment and control groups. In practice, we can check whether Michigan is a valid control state. If we apply the difference in difference method to Michigan and find no treatment effect, we consider it a valid control state because it shows that the treatment in Kentucky does not affect the workers in Michigan. Let's do the double difference estimation in Stata first. As shown in the last video, the coefficient on the interaction term between the treatment group indicator and the time indicator is the pure treatment effect of the policy on the outcome, as long as the parallel trend assumption holds. We type regress followed by the outcome variable, the log of the benefit duration, and then the explanatory variables, the time indicator, the treatment group indicator, and the interaction term between them. We employ double hashtags to include the level and interaction terms. Both the treatment and control groups are workers from Kentucky, so we use the if condition. The estimated coefficient on the interaction term is the average treatment effect. It is 0.19, which implies that the average duration of workers' compensation increases by about 19% due to the policy. The estimate is statistically significant at the 1% level. If the parallel chance assumption is not likely to hold, we consider two solutions. We can add control variables to the model to control for the factors that could lead to the trend difference. In this example, we add gender, marital status, age, industry, and type of injury to the model. We can store the result by the estimates store command and compare the results using the stab command. We find that the estimate of the interaction term becomes slightly larger after controlling for those variables from 0.19 to 0.22. The effect is still statistically significant at the 1% level. Another solution is the triple difference method. We use the workers in Michigan as additional groups of controls. It can be proved that the coefficient on the triple interaction term 
is the average treatment effect in this framework of the triple difference method. In Stata, we just need to use more hashtags to do that. We use two hashtags between the three dummy variables. The coefficient on the triple interaction term is the average treatment effect. In our example, the triple indifference estimate is tiny and it is not statistically significant at any reasonable level. As we mentioned, we can confirm that Michigan is a valid control state because the policy in Kentucky does not affect the workers in Michigan. We could not reject the null hypothesis that the policy has no effect on Michigan. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon in the next topic. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.